Okay, Steve, you want to take it away? Let's start with a big picture, Steve. Just um, start with a, you know, yeah, definition of the problem mission, and then the the schedule, big picture, and um, and then let's drill down to a status status report. Sure. Uh, Okay, I'll well, uh, begin with the mission. So uh, the uh, Invention Universe project, I mean, uh, this uh, new framework project is for our, I mean, um, online community to, for kids to upload their works and share the, uh, their works to uh, each other. And uh, uh, now we are a little uh, bit behind the schedule. So actually uh, this week we need uh, I, I need to deploy it to a uh, uh, online server, but now uh, I need to put it on uh, next week so everyone can uh, use it uh, and test it online. And uh, I will share my screen first. Okay, could you see my screen now? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, so I, I, last week, uh, open this. Steve, did we lose you? Yes, uh, I'm here. Uh, I just opened the, uh, the code. Okay, last week we talked about the uh, file structure, I mean the, the photo structure and the uh, basic project uh, infra uh, infrastructure. So, uh, okay. So actually, uh, actually we, uh, we talked about how to test the uh, backend functions and uh, how to uh, build a REST API. And uh, uh, this week, I um, I'm working on the animation part, and I'm uh, haven't uh, I haven't finished it yet. But the goal is to I mean uh, actually make the whole things the same as this uh, uh, high highly interactive one. So. Um, I will deploy the new uh, project uh, to to this server, and I will write everyone an email to test it. And um, the thing is, uh, I, I I will test the how to deploy the new framework to a uh, uh, AWS server, which is a uh, Amazon cloud server. And uh, then I will write a document. Uh, I mean, uh, instructions. Uh, on GitHub uh, to tell everyone uh, how to uh, deploy the Fiverr.js and um, React.js to a live server. Okay, so because now everything is happened to a local machine, so we need to put it on uh, uh, online. So uh, and also give it a URL so everyone uh, in, on internet can use the. Uh, this uh, this new uh, project, yeah. So actually, that's uh, the the goal and the mission of uh, in the uh, for the next week. And because uh, we need to test it, uh, not test it, launch the new project in the summer. I mean, actually on June twenty six. So uh, it means we only have uh, two. Uh, three weeks left, and uh, actually we need at least have ten days to um, fully test the the new uh, project before we can launch it and uh, let the kids use it in the summer. So um, I'm 
yeah, so for the next week, I will be super busy for uh, to uh, let it um, let the new project be live. Yeah, so uh, and also for the next week i will tell you uh something uh not not now i will um give you the instruction for how to build a, a animation using react um motion uh that library i uh, mentioned uh, last week yeah so actually uh this is uh yeah the main uh contact of this week. So, uh, Hesu, do you have some uh, questions? Or, yeah, to ask? Um, no, that's okay. Yeah. I, I think I understand what you're telling me, so uh, it's um, okay. Steve, when you talk about the part that's not completed yet is the animation, do you mean the uh, splash screen entry into Invention Universe? Or do you mean the animations that happen uh, in the user interface? Once yeah, actually the user interface, the whole user interface. Thing. Yeah. Okay, and may I ask why uh, the animation that you have in the present version works great, but we're not able to use that, um, the modules you used in the existing invention universe, we're not able to use that under the React slash Feather frameworks? I think I, I, I mentioned that last week because we need to rewrite the code because for the previous one, I mean, this one, I, I used the jQuery library to write everything. Right. Sorry. But uh, in, uh, uh, in the new one, we need to uh, use React Motion Got it. to uh, yeah to uh, rewrite the whole thing. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Sorry, Steve. I now remember that you explained that last week. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Um, okay, and may I ask, with respect to bringing new people on the team, um, hey, Sus, maybe you can answer this better. What, what's the best way to train people to get up to speed? In other words, we have a general rule of thumb in all of our development projects that it should be well enough documented so that a freshman engineer at MIT should be able to make edits within one day of reading the documentation. That's a general standard we set for documentation. It should be good enough that an MIT freshman can start to make edits to the code after one day of reading the documentation. First of all, let me ask, is that a reasonable standard for this project? Uh, yes, that would be like great to have a documentation. Yeah. Um, well, to work with React JS, maybe they should like learn what's going on. But there is something called like software engineering. Yeah. So we may do like use cases and database diagrams. Mm -hmm. So once they know how to use React JS, they don't really have to look for how our database standards are called and they, don't, they shouldn't like look for that by themselves. So mm -hmm. we just keep them like that, like the diagram and all the diagrams we have and we respect like, like those standards too. Right. So once they know like how React.js works, they just have to code that and use our standards. It, it should so, be even easier perhaps than when we're not working in a framework. That's the whole idea of using frameworks now so that new people can uh, code more efficiently. Yes. Uh, that, well, that's one reason for using a framework. Okay, Steve, let me ask you, is that standard of documentation reasonable for this project? Let's assume that um, the people we hire will have some experience using a back-end and front-end HTML5 framework, whether it's React or Feather or some other one, let's assume that they have some experience using frameworks. Is it reasonable to assume that our documentation should be good enough that a new member of the team can start to make edits in a day? 
Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, that's possible. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. That's good to hear that. <laughs> Is our documentation close to that now, or do we have some work to do to get our documentation to that? Yeah, that's the thing. We, uh, we still need to do some work to, I mean, uh, but it will not be so many as the previous one because uh, now we have some uh, common things because we are, uh, we are using uh, ReactJS and Feather.js, so we have, we can use the common, I mean, a document, um, documents from the official, I mean, uh, uh, site, yeah. Okay, great. Um, I, I'm sure you guys you know, have, know this, but let me just state it again. Um, in general, if a build it yourself project is not well documented or requires someone with unusual tools, expensive tools, or someone with unusual expertise to edit, then basically we're gonna assume we're ultimately gonna throw it away. If we can't edit the work we do uh, with, with inexpensive, easy to use tools by people that don't have unusual expertise, Basically, we're, we're ultimately going to throw that project away if we can't edit it. Does that, does that sort of compute with you guys? Yes, looks great. Right. Okay, I've, I've I mean, heard a senior scientist at Microsoft say that the most expensive part of development for Microsoft is rebuilding projects that weren't well documented. And um, I think investors are very, very sensitive to investing in companies that don't follow that development ethic. It's got to be easy to edit the work you do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry for being so um, adamant on that point, but it's important, I think, from a budget point of view, from a, a development project management point of view, and then from an investor point of view. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Okay. Okay, guys. Um, anything else we need to talk about, Steve? Yeah. Jesus, I, I think you've already, I mean, um, start to use Feather.js and Drag.js to build some uh, of your own projects. Is that right? Uh, Feather.js, I used it, but now I don't remember. And React.js, yes. I am using it to create some projects. Yeah, that's great. So uh, if you have any questions or, or, or yeah, when you are learning, so please just email me. Yeah. Great, I do. Uh, I, right now I have some questions, but I'm like studying, but it's kind of confusing, but. Um, Jesus, I registered, you say you're studying React and Feather and the, and the new tools that Steve is introducing. May I ask, how, how many hours do you think you've put in on your own time learning the tools that you need to know to keep up with Steve? Have you put uh, in eight hours, 40 hours, or 100 hours studying jQuery, React, Feather? OK, yes. Um, Feather JS is like really your time it's not that much fair years was like maybe four hours mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um jquery like 20 30 hours because i used it in a project in uh, the semester and it was kind of complicated okay. and react js i have like maybe 10 hours that i've been like studying okay this is very interesting to me um jesus could you summarize what you just told me in an email at the end of the at the end of the meeting? Okay. How sure. much time it took you to learn the tools that are required to be a developer in Invention Universe? Okay. Um, do you want me to write about Feather.js, React.js, jQuery? Yeah, all, all the tools, all the work you did on your own time 
the initiative you took to learn the tools to keep up with you. Steve, do you think this is useful data for managing our team in the future? And yeah, sure. I think uh, he should have uh, the experience is very, I mean, uh, valuable for us. Yeah. To guide the new I mean, team members. Yes. So we we can uh, tell them that, yeah, maybe uh, estimate the the time. Right. Yeah, they will need yeah. to. Yeah. We need this data, uh, Jesus, for project planning. Yes. Yes. Okay. I read it, and you. I send it to you later. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, Steve. Um, this is a um, useful meeting for me from a top down. I don't know if there are other bottom up stuff you want to cover. Uh, yes, uh, no, I think uh, that's it, yeah. Okay. Uh, I got a question, Steve. Yeah, sure. Just, uh, why are we using FreeJS as backend and not like PHP and... Um, yeah, PHP? so you, you ask me the reason, right? Uh, yeah. No, I don't think so. I mean, it's just like the first time I ask you. I want yes. to know that. I want to hear that. Yeah. So uh, I think I talked that before because um, for the uh, current one, the jQuery one, we are using PHP on the back end. Actually, it's a framework kick PHP. But uh, the thing is, uh, uh, since we want to um, add some real time functions uh, for our project, like, uh, you know, the, the, the uh, because I want to use the WebSocket, uh, this kind of protocol to make uh, a live chat, chatting uh, functions. So in that way, PHP is not a very good, I mean, um, choice. Actually, uh, we can use the, some like uh, long pouring this kind of strategy to uh, make the real time things happen but I don't think it's a, a good choice for the uh, whole team because I need to find a, a quick and uh, modern ways to uh, solve all the problems. So I did a lot of re research and I found Feather.js. This uh, framework is a new uh, and a new things. And uh, I, I, I learned something about uh, from the documents and I found that it can support a REST API, uh, both REST API and the WebSocket. And uh, it can build uh, uh, the both. It can build a, a project um, upon both protocol. So I think it will be a good choice for us to try. And also, it's a, a, a open source uh, framework. So I, I just want to uh, try it. Yeah. Great. Uh, that, okay. That's that. That's an informative answer, Steve. Um, may I? Um, can you correct? my impression of the two frameworks that you've used to deal with the back end. The Cake PHP, I understood, is a useful framework because it compiles or it, it, it writes the executable software in a very efficient way and it documents well. Uh, and I understood that the reason you choose Feather over Cake PHP is because uh, it allows you to execute more easily real-time functions like chat because you have access to the to the socket APIs. Yeah, that's one reason. And the two reasons, uh, the second reason is I think it's it will be I mean uh, easier for the developer because we are using the same language like uh, JavaScript uh, on both uh, back and front end. So in that case, we do not need to I mean uh, go uh, forth and back between the uh, uh, P, uh, the PHP and the JavaScript. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, that's the second reason I think about that's, it. Yeah. That's a super valuable reason. Keep everything in one language. I love it. Okay. So what do you think about this? I mean, uh, uh, Jesus. Uh, well, I, I think that's right too. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah. I was, yeah we, uh, because we can discuss, uh, discuss it because uh, Using uh, Feather.js, we, we may have some risk because it's a, a pretty new and modern things. Um, but I think Invention Universe also is a, 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 a new things, so we can try it. I mean, on a, a, a modern, I mean, the new, try new things on it. Yeah. 
It's just that when I was studying like fair years, mm -hmm. I remember the chat thing that you said, like the, you write something and it appears on the other uh, real time chat. Yes. But for like asking thing to database, I was thinking on Ajax and I don't know how do you do that like in um, this project with Feather JS. So that's the part I wasn't like um, matching to me, but if it's possible, then that's great. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I think there's a question in there, Steve. Yeah. Why are, instead of Ajax, why are we using Feather? Uh, Ajax, actually, uh, we are uh, we we need to build REST API uh, upon our uh, Ajax. Uh -huh. So w the thing is, uh, to build a real time uh, functions, the more uh, the, the the more efficient way is to using socket. Yeah, I I think it's a it's a uh, we 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 need to give it a try. Yeah. Okay. I I can buy that if um, and did I understand that. Um, uh, Feather is, oh, it's React that was developed by Facebook. Is that the case? Uh, no, actually, React.js is a front-end library. So, uh -huh. uh, yeah, but Feather.js, uh, we, we use Feather.js to build the uh, uh, API for the back-end, yeah. But, but what, didn't Facebook adopt one of those frameworks? Actually, uh, React.js can adapt to every, I mean, any framework. Yeah. That's a that's a beauty uh, thing oh. for the React JS. Yeah, I read that Netflix and Airbnb, all those like famous websites, Instagram, use React JS too. Yes. Okay. So, so React is used by major applications to design the front end, and Feather is a new back end framework that enables um, you to do more real time application programming more easily uh yes not uh, only for re re real time but also for the i mean um, traditional i mean rest using yeah. edit core to i mean build uh, yeah. like the traditional blog things yeah and 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 you use js to manage your database uh, rather than php yes good okay um Steve, I'm sorry to be so slow here, but uh, I want to be in a position to explain to investors yeah, sure. why, why we make decisions. And this is a really important decision, right? Yes, I, I think everything, uh, this decision is based on uh, how to save one time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. How to save coding time. And yeah, how, save coding time, because uh, and we can use a uh, uh, less Developer because uh, Feather for the backend Feather .js, uh can uh, allow you to quickly uh, build some uh, some uh, fantasy uh, application. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Thanks for explaining, Steve. That, that's very helpful for me. Yeah. I know you've you've said this in the past. I just haven't sort of put it all together. Okay. Um, if nothing else, uh, let's adjourn the week that we need you here, Steve, when both Jesus, Danny, uh, Andrea will be here is June 26th. The week of June 26th. Okay, the week of June 26th. Yeah. Okay. So, John, could you send me the schedule? I mean, uh, the, uh, for me to, I mean, uh, yeah. like come to uh, come yeah. to Boston or... Yep, I'm gonna do that right now. Um, I'll copy Andrea and, and Jesus and Danny and everyone. Okay. Anything else we need to talk about? Yeah, that's it. Great. Jesus, thanks for joining. Uh, let me end this recording. I'll, um, I'll make uh, sure the rest of the team can access it. Uh, this is a really important recording. Okay, guys. Talk soon. Okay. Okay. Bye, everyone.